Welcome to section 3, Storing Data. In this section, we'll look at how to store a user's name and password into a database. In this particular video, we'll take a look at how to create a table for that data. So far, we built a flask cap containing two static pages. In doing so, we started developing a generalizable workflow that we can use to build out the rest of the app. This workflow is summarized by the request response cycle. When you type in a URL and press enter, your request hits routes.py. In routes.py, the URL is mapped to a Python function that fetches a web template and its assets and renders it to HTML. That rendered HTML is sent back to the browser where it displays to the user. The problem with this app so far is that it doesn't do anything interesting. The home page and the about page look the same for all users. Their content is static. How can we create web pages that are personalized to each user? How can we let users sign up for the app so that they can do things like view places around them? We'll talk about that in this section. To do this, we need a place to safely store a user's data. We can do this with a database. Here's how a database fits into the request response cycle. When a user types in an address and presses enter, the browser issues a request for that URL. The request hits routes.py, where the URL is mapped to a Python function. The Python function can interact with a database it can write information to the database, like creating a new user. It can read information from the database, like places near a user. Python function can pass along data from the database to a web template, render it to HTML, and send it back to the browser so that the user can see it. By adding a database, we move beyond static websites and create dynamic websites, where we can safely store user data and render content in pages that is customized to each user. Let's begin by creating a system that lets users sign up for this app. To accomplish this, we need a place to safely store user data. We can do this by setting up a database. There are four things we need to do. First, install a database engine. Second, create a new database called Learning Flask. Third, create a new table called Users. And fourth, add a new user. We've already completed steps one and two in the first section. We installed Postgres and created a database called Learning Flask, so we're good to go on those two. Let's move on to the third step. Inside the Learning Flask database, we need a table where we can safely store users' information. We'll call this table Users. The information that we'll want to store are a user's first name, last name, email, and password. Quick note on passwords. Unlike first name, last name, and email, it is not a good idea to simply store passwords as is in plain text in the database. The reason for this is that if someone breaks into your database, they would be able to see all your users' passwords. Not good. One way to defend against this is to encrypt passwords first, and then store that encrypted password into the database. The PWD hash column is short for password hash. We'll take passwords and encrypt them using a hash function and then store that in the database. Flask provides hash functions that we'll use to make this pretty straightforward. Start your Postgres server. Depending on the installation you used, the startup step will be slightly different across different installations. I downloaded Postgres app, so I'm going to open this app and open PSQL. And this opens up a new terminal window for me called PSQL where I can interact with the database. Let's enter the learning Flask database in Postgres. We do slash C and then the name of the database. Now I'm connected to the Learning Flask database. Create a new users table using the create table statement. The columns to create are UID for the user ID. And then first name, last name, email, and PWD hash. For first name, last name, email, and PWD hash, we're using the var card data type. This lets us store strings of variable length. And then for the UID column, we're using the serial data type. This will let us generate an ID for each row that automatically increments. More on this in a bit. Using a select statement, firm that the table was created. And you can see this table is empty. There are no rows in this table just yet. Now that we've created a new users table, let's move on to the fourth step and add a new test user to this table. Let's use an insert into statement to create a new user. We'll want to store encrypted passwords into this table, so this user entry is temporary, just for testing. Now when we run a select statement, we see the table has one row, has one user, and the UID field has auto-incremented. 
So far, we've created a users table in the database. Next, let's connect this database to the Flask app.